in the system. So always try and, and address it um, to the office rather than the name. But when you go after their liens, it'll be um, obviously after the, the, the liens of the uh, person. So that's the only thing I qualify in, in my answer to you. But it's, it's all the same deal. Yeah? Thank you. All right. Thank you for your question, Idaho. All right. Next we have uh, South Minnesota. South Minnesota? Yes, this is Paul. Uh, hi. Yes, hi. Uh, question on the ecclesiastical deed poll. Um, I got myself into some legal problems. Um, was uh, <clears throat> arrested, tased, <clears throat> taken to jail, thrown into jail. Um, um, I did everything that I shouldn't have done. Um, allowed myself to be fingerprinted, photographed, um, <clears throat> Uh, went to see the judge uh, within the 72-hour limit, um, blah, 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 signed a paper to return. Um, they're going to, uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I should say they're in the process, that they're going to seize the vehicle. Um, can, the, can the deed pull reverse um, the damages that I've already caused to myself by submitting to their jurisdiction? Absolutely. Let me Let me tell you, what is written in their own laws at the highest level in Canon Law 1983. Okay, we are, we are tricked into believing that pieces of paper, ordinary pieces of paper, not ones that are in blue and signed in your blood, and that's a t totally different level. But ordinary pieces of paper are the things that condemn us. If we sign something under duress, it has no legal validity whatsoever once we explain that it was done under duress. And there's no time limit to this. There's no time limit. It doesn't say if you don't come back in five days, it's too bad. The bank has all the policies. We're talking with the bank, and they put all the policies in their favour. But as a principle of law, they cannot... Sorry about all the noise in the background. They, they cannot break this. This is a principle of law. Similarly, if you speak under oath or vow and that oath or vow is done under duress, it holds no water whatsoever as a principle of law. The only thing you need to do is establish your standing and make it clear as a fact that the entire process, you were under stress, under duress on the physical assault upon you and that you wish to uh, make it clear or, or appeal uh, and then they say we deny the appeal, but certainly make it on the record as a deed or part of a deed that that uh, you are under duress and therefore all this must be considered a null and void. Now, of course, just as the YouTube video showed of a fellow who had himself recorded trying to establish their rights, we're dealing with people who are ducking and weaving. They are addicted gambling traders they don't want to be exposed and they will use every excuse in the book. But go and have a look at the definition under canon law of an oath and a vow and you will see the Roman canons actually say that if it's under duress, it has no legal standing whatsoever. And a real contract is always a vocalised contract. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, yes, even... Uh well, I understand uh, the the, the uh, uh, concept of under duress, but um, I didn't, and I could have used it. However, I didn't on any of the papers that I signed. That still won't matter. Look, under duress has no time limit on it. What I'm saying is, if it, look, the fact you sign something, I mean, say, let's take a practical example. They tase you, they lock you up, you come into a room a couple of burly detectives sit down there and grill you for eight hours. So you've now had one hour's sleep in 24 hours, yeah? Right. And then they say, if you don't sign this, we're going to put you in that cell with, with Happy, and Happy's like 400 pounds and, you know, tears the heads off chickens. So they put you in that situation, you sign the piece of paper, yeah? Right. No one expects you at that moment to say, I want it on the record that I sign this under duress. I mean, if you want to, good luck to you. It's only when you have, uh, no, are no longer in danger 
and the word danger is actually correct in this point. You're no longer in danger. Are you then able to express that you uh, did things under duress and you wish to appeal? And you, you look, an appeal doesn't have to be the formal process of the judge. An appeal can, can be lodged by you uh, through the courts at a higher court. And that's what I do. Now that you know that a judge uh, loses their commissions on a higher appeal, even if the appeal process is closed, you can still use the system at a higher level to have it recorded. Okay? Okay, okay. Um, now, just another... I'm. I'm this is my first night. This is my first uh, introduction to this whole process. Um, when you say appeal, what is it that I would be appealing since there's, there has been no judgment rendered? Would it be the appealing of the, 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 uh, uh, the violation of rights? Well, I'm, I'm assuming the judgment will, you, you will return at some point um, that they won't be making a judgment in your absence. You'll be brought back to a court and a judgment will be rendered. Yeah? Right. Okay. And so um, at that point, you have the opportunity for elocution. Elocution is your opportunity to comment on the sentence. Yeah? To comment on the... Sentence. Like you oh, have sentence. to... When they, when, they put, when they put up a sentence to right. you, that's an offer. Okay. I, I, I strongly suggest you read the positive law. I strongly suggest... Right. so that you become competent on some of these key points. But when, when a sentence is brought forward is merely an offer as a beneficiary, right. Right. You can, yeah? But at that point, even prior to you, um, uh, how, how they say how you say or they, they effectively um, ask for your comment, uh, at that point you can simply say, um, Your Honour, I state for the record uh, for my appeal, I... I, I I have a um, I have a comment here to say that I'm I'm actually saying something that's not strictly correct. So um, what I would then say to you is um, uh, have a read of the canons. Um, in terms of the process for the uh, the uh, judgment allocution, yeah, the comment is given to me. Allocution means the judge has to quote all the law he's using to convict you. So that's correct. So I stand corrected on using the word allocution, I, I apologise for that. I guess what I'm saying is there is an opportunity for you to speak in the proceedings at some point. Uh, so long as you make it on the record that you state that as part of the appeal that you will be lodging, you wish it to be on the record that all that you went through and signed was under duress and therefore legally has no validity, because you were physically abused and mentally abused, that's all you have to say. And the judge then has to think about whether they're going to go forward with a sentence. And then what the judge will normally do is offer a plea bargain. Okay? And it, it happens like that. Okay? What you've basically said to the judge is you're going to appeal, which means the judge is not going to get their $1,500 or their 2000 or whatever it is into their account from which they can draw down their fees um, because it's going to be upheld they're going to say well how about this yeah and that's up to you to decide yes or no does that help you okay great thank you thank you Frank uh, yeah. okay uh, just to go back over uh, Paul will um, go ahead and read the pos go to the link that Ted sent you the the information read positive law and also the previous calls here on talk to you uh, for this uh, call ID 90342. Uh, you can re-listen to several of the past calls, and that might help you as well. I uh, do have Eastern North Carolina. I'm going to unmute. Uh, did you have a question? Hello? Eastern North Carolina? Uh, 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 I don't know. Uh, that may be me. Uh, no, I, I, I just... Uh, uh, Hi. Sorry you've been waiting for a while. I know I know people are waiting to ask questions. I'm sorry. I'm, okay. That's my okay. answers have been a bit long, so I apologize, but far away. All right. I think I don't think you had a question. Uh, okay. We have a question from, um, let's see, Montana. Hi. Uh, from Montana, 
Uh, Frank, we just wanted to thank you for all the stuff that you're teaching us. Um, we had two foreclosures, uh, auctions coming up, and the attorney involved. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi. Okay. Anyway, the attorney involved in both these foreclosures, basically we called up and said, um, look, we filed a complaint in the local court just to buy time, you know, but he didn't. He didn't know that, but we said, he says, oh, well, I can get around the law, and, and I know how to get around the laws of your state, and we turned around and said, well, okay, bring it on, but just so that you know, we're coming at it from a superior property holder competent position, and we understand the three forms of court, and all of a sudden, he's like, uh, let me get back to you. And about three hours later, they called and said, both foreclosures are canceled. Well, there you go. I there just, go. that's all we said. It's just simply yep. some of the, the language and understanding not to give them our fear or our energy. And, um, that you know, they, they feed off of that. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Um, and that's great news, and it just shows that knowledge is power, but with any knowledge, you have to obviously be able to see it right through, but there you see, as the knowledge is emerging, um, they know that they're being exposed, and that's great news. Thank you for letting us know that. And, yeah, and it was just simply, I'm a property holder, I have a spirit position, I know who I am, and I'm competent, and if you want to argue it in the three forms of court, bring it on. There you go. <laughs> I'll listen. Well you know, yeah. that was it. So anyway, I just wanted to encourage folks that it, it's just sometimes a few words and not feeding them. Their tools, and this is what I tell folks, their tools are the cheapest tools of all, uh, fear, intimidation, and arrogance. They certainly are. They and it, certainly doesn't are. Cost them, it doesn't cost them a thing to have those three tools. So anyway, thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Thank no, you, thank you. Okay, next, uh, we, I believe Northern Virginia. Do you have a question this time, Northern Virginia? Northern Virginia? Are you there? you have a question? Hello, Northern Virginia. All right, they must be hitting the wrong button. Sorry about that. Ford man, you have another question? Ford man? Yes, um, I'm, I wanted to ask you earlier too. I, I came on the call late, number one, uh, but the information you gave me about helping my friend out, um, and giving him the correct information to uh, see things through, um, to make him then um, adhere to the Ecclesiastes Depot that he's already submitted. Um, do you have that information on your website, or you know, could you email it to me? Um, and then also too. Um, dealing with any tax situations. So that's but the last bit I missed, I mean, I've, I've, I've talked to you about the, the next steps documents, but what was the last little bit you just said then? Yeah, um, I, I came in on a call late and I missed the first part of your call. And as far as the steps after you file the uh, Ecclesiastes Depot, who you file it to, which, correct if I'm wrong, you put it on the back of the first court notice that was sent to you. Yeah, that's right. You always use you always use their documents as the transmitting vehicle to 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 deliver a depot, and you do that so that you overcome again these these bank officials. It's all, I mean, think of going to the worst casino in the world. That's ultimately what you're doing. You're going to the worst casino to play on the worst table in the world, where the house has loaded the dice or loaded the cards to the point that you have like a one in five million chance of winning. That's how they set up the game. So one of the, the, the tricks that they do constantly, if you're trying to do it administratively before you go to court, is you'll send in a letter and they'll say you're dead. So as a dead letter, it just gets filed in the correspondence, which is like white noise. But when you um, hard glue your deed pole on the back of one of their notices, then they can't say that you're dead or that they can't see you or hear you. So that's why you do it. But it is still detailed under Article 133. Okay? Okay, okay. All the steps are, are, are under there. All one. steps are there, yeah. Go and have a look. I always say if people have read 
and they've studied and they still don't understand, then, then this is not about 